Are you planning on traveling to Italy soon? If so, stick around to learn about the top 10 Italy culture shocks you might get exposed to. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Rick. And hi, I'm Andrea. And today, we'll tell you at the top 10 things that you might find to be a culture shock in Italy. But it's perfectly normal here. Also, stay tuned until the end of the video, because we'll give you one bonus tip that will save you a lot of major embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> but first, if you like videos like this, now is a great time to go ahead and hit the subscribe button, so you never miss a video. Absolutely. Let's start with Italy culture shock number 10. We're going to call it regionality. Yes, absolutely. Well, folks, for this Italian culture shock, if you think that Italy is a country that's the same from one end to another, think again. In fact, Italy has 20 regions and are very different from each other. Even worse than that, sometimes every municipality has its own <laughs> foods, traditions, and even Dialects. a different language. Absolutely. That's somehow different from the next town just a few kilometers away. For this reason, we strongly recommend you do some research about the area you're going to visit in order to have the best experience. Let's give you an example. Pasta carbonara. This dish you think is a typical dish from Italy. Uh-uh. It's from the Roman, Roman area and the surrounding area. Mm -hmm. So if you're visiting Venice, for example, don't expect the best carbonara on the menu. And certainly don't ask for spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> they don't exist here. Well, they don't exist anywhere in Italy. <laughs> All right, guys, for uh, the Italian culture shock number nine, the liquor laws. <sighs> Can you believe the drinking age in Italy is 16 years old for beer and wine and 18 for liquor, but nobody enforces it. In fact, you can buy beer and wine in every supermarket, convenience store and grocery store. And coffee shop. And coffee shop. And drinking on the street is also legal. Absolutely. And despite this relaxed liquor law, getting drunk in Italy, uh, for Italian is not common. Even though they drink wine with their meals, it's always consumed in moderation and mostly as a way to enjoy and socialize with their friend and not to get drunk. Wine is a huge part of Italian culture. And again, every town, city, village, farm has its own and they are very proud of it. So drink the local wine. That's right. Actually, where we live, it's very hard for me to find Chianti, which is my favorite wine. I know. But they get Sangiovese. Absolutely. So number eight, Italians are very affectionate. This is very true before the COVID era. In the future, it might change. We don't know. Yeah. Until this year, the um, most common way of getting a greeting among friends was a kiss in the cheek, mm -hmm. even between, between guys. And a gentle hug. Physical contact was not just common, but expected. Yeah, you know, it was such a huge culture shock for me here in Italy because Canadians just aren't affectionate. And Italians are also so incredibly social and they can sit and talk for hours and hours about food and the weather and so on. And digestion, the book of digestion. And digestion. <laughs> so more on this when we talk about restaurants. Also, you know, it's common for family members to show up unexpectedly at someone's house for coffee. Yeah, all the time. Hmm. Which leads us to number seven. People dress up all the time. You know, it's no secret that Italy is the land of fashion, and many high-end clothing brands come from Italy. Italians always dress up before leaving their house. Well, maybe not me, but Italian women in particular, they're always perfectly dressed even to take out the garbage. Absolutely. The only time you see an Italian older than 17 in jogging pants is when actually going, is going jogging. Mm, not so sure, but, Absolutely. but it's kind of true. So number six, store hours. If you're coming from North America, it's quite common for you to think that stores are always open 24-7. Not in Italy, at least not in small town and non-chain stores. The small families run store in non-touristy area, they open between 9 and 12.30 in the morning and they close for lunch between 12.30 and 3.30. And then they open again and they close at 7.30 at night. They are also closed on Sunday and in the summer they usually have two to three weeks uh, holiday. Shopping malls, uh, outlet mall, 
a supermarket, chain store, in touristy area, they have a different store, more like North American hours. Mm. But these are more exception than the norm. And I remember that in some towns, they have a day that all the stores are closed. Absolutely. How weird. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, for Italy, culture shock number five, I'm going to talk to you about bathrooms because they are really different than North America. First of all, if you go to a small coffee shop or a restaurant, you rarely find a separate men's and women's bathroom. Who cares anyway? In most cases, it's just a single bathroom for everyone. And some other times in the bigger venues or the bigger restaurants, you have one room for sinks and separate stalls for, for men and women, but they all go in together. Secondly, it's quite common to have <laughs> toilets with no toilet seats. I know. People do in Italy do not like to sit on toilets. Rather, they rather just not sit at all. Lastly, if you need to use the bathroom in a city, you cannot just go walk in a coffee shop and ask for the bathrooms. Bathrooms are just for patrons. Yeah. You will need to buy something small, either a coffee or a bottle of water, in order to use the facility. Mm -hmm. Well, in every city downtown, you always can find a public bathroom. But remember, they're usually very clean, but they are not free. You need some change because they have a machine at the, at the entrance in order to, for you to get in. Or a woman with a little dish that you put some coins there. So, so 50 cents is the minimum. Moral of the story, if you need to pee, you gotta pay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Now we're going to be talking about tips about the restaurants, the food, the coffee shop. Yes, Italian food is so much part of the culture. And there's some big differences between Italy and the rest of the world. So, number Italian culture shock. Number four, dinner time. When Italians go for dinner, either at a restaurant or at a friend's house, they never go earlier than 8.30. <laughs> so if you go to a restaurant at seven o'clock, like you're used to back home, you're gonna find it empty. Absolutely. Italians also have a saying to describe this habit. Cenare con le galline, means eat, the, eat with the chicken, <laughs> because chicken eat early. Another very important uh, thing to remember is that the restaurant usually have one seating because people like to stay at the table for hours and hours and talk and socialize. The only exception to this rule are pizzeria because usually they're like fast and people go have a pizza and leave. They don't, they don't mingle around. But regular restaurant usually you can sit there as long as you like. And now tip number three, coffee. Coffee has its own rituals and rules in Italy. First of all, espresso is the king. And when you ask for a coffee, in Italy you get a shot of espresso, period. Usually delivered to you in seconds, mm -hmm. from the time you order to the time you get it. Yeah, can you imagine? You remember Starbucks? Oh, yeah, it would take right. like three hours. hours. <laughs> <laughs> but there's some variation you can ask. Let's take a look. First of all, caffè macchiato means one shot of espresso with a drop of foamy milk. Mm -hmm. Number two, caffè ristretto means an even smaller espresso. Number three, Café Lungo, it's one shot of espresso with a little, tiny little bit more water, so it's a tiny bit longer. Number four, Café Corretto, this is a shot of espresso with a shot of booze of their choice. <laughs> Sounds good. Some buca or grappa, mm. and yes, people drink that in the morning as well. Deca or Café Deca, it's just a decaf espresso. Mm. And now we enter the Café Dorzo category. This is not really coffee, but it's roasted barley, toasted and grounded and brewed. This is becoming very popular lately in Italy, and it can be also enriched with ginseng. So to make things even more confusing, there's two kinds of ca caffè d'orzo. Tassa grande in a big cup, or tassa piccola in a small cup. Espresso is obviously a single shot, never a double, unless you ask, but it's not common. No. And lastly, if you get invited to an Italian house, they're going to give you a caffè di mocha, mm, which is yes. the old um, stovetop coffee machine. This coffee is made with the traditional coffee machine that goes on the stuff stove top. And Italian love it, even though it's an acquired taste. Mm, not so fair, not so great for me. So we know this is confusing. Yeah. So follow the link in the description and we can get a printable cheat sheet of all the coffee that you can find in Italy. That's right. <laughs> now, let's say you're here in Italy and you had lunch and you feel like you should have a cappuccino. Natural, right? Wrong. <laughs> in Italy, cappuccino is a breakfast item and nobody would drink it past 11. Absolutely. Actually, I think 12. Mm. But just tourists would ask for a cappuccino <laughs> after that time. And believe me, Italians make 
fun of them, and they will make fun of you in front of you. <laughs> yes. Now, another rule、uh, or an important rule about coffee is it's never served to go. Mind you, with the COVID regulations and all of this new normal stuff, yeah, it might be changing. Yeah, but usually you drink it at the at the bar or the table. Exactly. Now, this was a big chapter, but we know that it's really important in Italian culture. Absolutely. So now let's go to tip number two. Tap water in Italy is not served. Tap water is perfectly fine to drink, but it, in Italy、uh, nobody drinks tap water, especially the restaurant. They will never serve with tap water. Not knowingly. <laughs> no. When you ask for water at the restaurant, you are being asked, you are being faced with the choices of. Naturale, which is still water, or frizzante, which is sparkling water, or gazzata. Yeah. And another big difference is that ice or lemon、uh, is not common at all for water. Nope.、Uh, if you want ice or lemon in your water, you have to ask for it. And some tourists are quite surprised that they have to spend two to three euros on a bottle of water at the restaurant. Gosh, what wine costs the same amount? Yeah, or less. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I know. <clears throat> so tip number one. Waiters at restaurant do not bother you. When you go to a restaurant in Italy, waiters come to you when you have to order, when they bring you food, when they take food away from you, and that's about it. That's it. Yeah. Other than that, they will never come and ask you stupid questions like "How was your meal?" or "Do you want another drink?" Ninety-seven、mm-hmm. times. No, 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 no. That's considered rude. Italians go out to drink, to eat, and socialize with their with their friends, and they enjoy their companies.、Yeah. So they don't want to be bothered by an intruding waiter.、Mm-hmm. So if you want to、uh, have something else, you have to ask.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, just you raise your hand, wait, take a look, call the、yeah. waiter. As I mentioned before, people sit at the table for quite an entire evening, and bringing a bill before the、uh, before someone asks for it is considered extremely bad because it means that you want to get rid of the customer.、That's、so、right. if you want the bill, you have to ask. Now for the bonus tip, the bill. The bill. <laughs> When the bill comes in Italy, the bill is divided per person. It doesn't matter what this person ate or that person drank or that this person shared a potato or that one shared a broccoli. It's just the bill comes. You say it's. Twenty-two euros. We per all pay twenty per person exactly, and we just divide it up. However, it's customary to leave a few euros as a tip to round it up, and that's it—just a few euros. Service is included. Exactly. Now, if a restaurant asks you for a tip, they're a tourist trap. So go away. Exactly. And lastly, don't ask for separate bills. No, it does not exist. You're、no. gonna get a very mean look, and that's it. So, well, folks. We hope you enjoyed these few tips on how to handle Italian culture shock. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Absolutely. See you next time, bye guys. Bye guys.